Hey folks, welcome back to the Caspa special. Pull up a chair, grab your favorite drink, because today, oh, today we're doing more than just comparing coins. Oh, yes, this is the big one, the ultimate heavyweight showdown. In the blue corner, Bitcoin, the OG digital gold, the legend that started it all. And in the red corner, Caspa, the proof of work sprinter that's basically breaking the sound barrier for crypto payments. I'm Alex, and I've been itching to talk about this. And today I'm here with Monica. Yeah, I'm really enjoying to join this one here. My name is Monica, and it's the first time joining this Caspa special episode. Honestly, I've been looking forward to it all week. So, if you've ever wished crypto could feel instant, like tap your card instant, but still be rock-solid secure and fully decentralized, you're going to love this. Caspa doesn't just speed up Bitcoin's road, it rips up the asphalt and builds a whole new highway. And Jamie, I think people are going to be shocked when they hear just how fast we're talking. Oh, I'm ready for the gasps. But before we floor it, let's give everyone the lay of the land. Bitcoin wrote the playbook back in 2009. It's like a very disciplined train, one carriage after another, always in a straight line. That's what gives it legendary security, but also makes it painfully slow. A new block shows up roughly every 10 minutes. When, and at the base layer, we're talking about seven transactions per second, right? So, about seven transactions per second. That's where we usually start talking about Bitcoin's limits. But here's where Caspa steps in and says, why stick to one track? Right, instead of a single line of blocks, Caspa's got this block DAG. Think spiderweb instead of train track. Multiple blocks can be mined in parallel. And the best part? It doesn't throw away any valid block. Everything's kept and neatly organized by this genius traffic controller called Ghost DAG. Okay, so picture Bitcoin like a supermarket with just one checkout lane. Sure, everyone gets served eventually, but better pack some snacks for the wait. And Caspa? That's like walking into a mega store with a dozen checkouts open, plus a head cashier making sure no one cuts the line. More lanes, same proof of work trust. Here's the jaw drop moment. Bitcoin's cruising at about 0.1 blocks per second, basically one every 10 minutes. Meanwhile, Caspa's already running at 10 blocks per second, aiming for 32 soon and dreaming of triple digits in the future. That's how you go from 7 TPS to thousands, all on layer one. And that speed really shows up at checkout, the confirmation step. On Bitcoin, for a big payment, you might wait for six blocks, around an hour, before it's considered super safe. But with Caspa, your transaction's in the ledger almost instantly, and finality happens fast. For everyday payments, it's like swapping a horse-drawn carriage for a rocket. Take buying a coffee, for example. On Bitcoin's base layer, you pay, and then you wait. On Caspa, you pay and it's done before the barista finishes steaming the milk. That's the gap in user experience. Bitcoin's base layer shines for large, long-term value, while Caspa's aiming to be your go-to everyday digital cash. Let's talk security, because speed's worthless if someone can just rewrite history. Both Bitcoin and Caspa are anchored in proof of work, but Caspa's block DAG shifts the economics of attack. In a linear chain, an attacker only needs to outpace the honest chain. Right, but in Caspa's block DAG, all honest parallel blocks contribute to the ledger's heaviness. So to pull off a 51% attack, you'd need to outwork all those honest blocks being mined in parallel, not just a single branch. That's a much steeper challenge at the same total hash rate. Exactly. And that's where immutability comes in. Both systems still rely on the same bedrock, massive, verifiable, computational work securing the record. The key difference is how that work gets counted. Bitcoin's model is like a single file line, one block at a time. Caspa's model picks up far more of the valid work that Bitcoin would discard, folding it into permanent history. Honest work isn't wasted, and it all weighs against an attacker. So that parallelism also shapes scaling philosophy, right? Bitcoin's play is to keep layer one minimal and ultra stable, pushing high volume transactions to layer two, like the Lightning Network. Lightning inherits Bitcoin's base layer security, but it adds complexity channels, liquidity management, routing nodes, and that can introduce centralization risk. And Caspa? Sounds like it approaches scaling differently. Definitely. Caspa scales directly on layer one for payments. The block DAG design means high block rates and throughput right on the base layer, so everyday transactions feel fast and simple without leaving L1. But what about more complex workloads, like smart contracts? That's where layer two comes in. Caspa plans to use zero-knowledge rollups with L1 acting as sequencer, data availability layer, and settlement anchor. 
They're also eyeing Oracle voting and real-time attestation networks. So L1 for speed and cache-like UX, L2 for heavier DAP logic. And that feeds right into user experience. The white paper even calls out total blocking time, those delays that make users abandon a flow. Bitcoin's base layer can feel slow and congested, especially during fee spikes. Caspa's goal is that almost instant feel on L1 for basic payments, so you keep the user engaged instead of losing them before confirmation. But of course, speed means nothing without sound monetary policy. And that's another philosophical split worth talking about. Bitcoin's famous for its halving schedule. Every times are low 210,000 blocks, or about every four years, minor rewards drop by half. It's a dramatic, predictable rhythm that really reinforces the digital gold scarcity story. The latest halving on April 20th, 2024, cut rewards from 6.25 BTC to 3.125 BTC. Caspa takes a smoother route. Instead of those cliff-like halvings, it uses a geometric emission curve called the chromatic phase. Rewards shrink each month by a factor of half to one-twelfth, the same ratio as semitones in a 12-note tempered musical scale. Over roughly a year, what they call an octave, the reward halves, but without the shock. That makes minor income more predictable, reduces variance, and discourages massive pools by making solo or small-scale mining more viable. Max supply? About 28.7 billion KAS. And the white paper calls out two other precise details. One, in-site air launch. No pre-mine, no pre-sale, no early investor allocation. Two, and Chugmind, per second, not per block. So if the block rate changes, rewards per block adjust to keep the emission rate constant. It's a pretty elegant design, especially for a high BPS network. That per-second emission thing. Why go that route instead of per block? Does it really make much difference? Professional. It does. If block times fluctuate, the per-second model keeps rewards stable over time. In high-throughput systems, that's huge for economic predictability. Makes sense. Now, shifting gears, governance and culture. Bitcoin has this powerful idea called ossification. Keep the core protocol as unchanging as possible to preserve predictability and minimize coordination risk. That's great for its digital gold role, but it does push innovation to higher layers and can make base layer evolution very slow. And Caspa flips that philosophy on its head. Instead of ossifying, they're all about continuous layer one innovation to revive Satoshi's original peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash vision. Yeah, it's all over their roadmap. Dagnite as the successor to GhostDag to make confirmations match real internet latency a ZK Layer 1, Layer 2 bridge, Oracle voting, all bundled into coordinated hard forks. The clear message is keep pushing L1 forward. So payments stay fast, decentralized, and secure, directly on chain. And they've got the pedigree to do it. The research comes from Dr. Jonathan Sampolinsky and collaborators, the same minds behind GhostDag and BlockDag theory. Which explains why Caspa can be bold about parallel blocks, yet still rigorous about ordering and finality. Let me hit you with some imagine this scenarios, and you tell me if Bitcoin L1 could pull them off. Everyday payments like bus tickets, coffee, e-commerce checkouts. On Caspa L1, you tap and it feels instant. On Bitcoin L1, you'd push that to L2 or wait it out. Real-time apps like trading or high-frequency microtransactions. Caspa's base layer is actually fast enough to make them viable. Network growth surges. When participation spikes, Bitcoin's L1 deliberately stays slow. But Caspa's horizontal scaling with more parallel blocks is designed to absorb that load without resorting to giant blocks or sacrificing decentralization. So the idea is to keep both speed and decentralization cranked up, even as the network gets busier, instead of forcing users to climb to higher layers just to get performance. And when it comes to the famous blockchain trilemma, security, decentralization, scalability, your document doesn't pull any punches. Want me to run through it? Please do. I'm curious how it looks side by side. Security. High on both. Bitcoin's L2 inherits L1 security, but adds complexity. While Caspa's block DAG actually enhances L1 security by keeping more valid work. Decentralization. Bitcoin's L1 is highly decentralized, 
but its L2 introduces some centralization risks in channels and routing. CASPA's high block rate plus smooth emissions aim to reduce mining variance and discourage oversized pools. Scalability, Bitcoin L1 low. Bitcoin with L2 high but off-chain. CASPA L1 high, thanks to direct parallel processing. Professional. And that sets the stage for the raw numbers from the doc. Consensus. Bitcoin equals Nakamoto, longest chain POW. CASPA equals Ghostag Phantom, Blockdag POW. Block time rate. Bitcoin hour 10 minutes equal 0.1 BPS. CASPA hour one second class with hour 10 BPS today. Aiming for hour 32 BPS and envisioning hour 100 BPS. Base layer TPS. Bitcoin equals hour 7 TPS. CASPA has thousands of TPS potential on layer 1. Thanks to parallel blocks. Scaling approach. Bitcoin, layer 2-centric for payments. CASPA, layer 1-centric for payments. Parallel blocks. With L2 for ZK rollups and dApps. Monetary policy. Bitcoin, fixed supply with 4-year halvings. Most recent April 20th, 2024. CASPA, fixed supply, smooth monthly emission cuts. Chromatic scale, fair launch. Hour, 28.7 be dollars cap. Here's a subtle but huge one. Wasted work. In Bitcoin, if two miners find a block at the same time, one becomes an orphan, just tossed out. But in Caspa, both blocks count. The ordering algorithm lines them up, turning what would be conflict into collaboration. And that's a big reason they can push block rates so high. And that also feeds into security. More honest work making it into the ledger means an attacker has to beat all of it. Exactly. Make the defender's effort count is baked right into Caspa's layer one. So when you zoom out, the doc doesn't hand out a single crown. Professional. Bitcoin stands as digital gold. Stable, predictable, ideal for long-term value storage and big transfers where time isn't critical. Caspa steps in as digital silver. Fast, spendable, with sub-second confirmations and layer one scalability for everyday payments. If we're asking, where does Caspa really shine in a direct comparison? The doc makes it crystal clear. Faster blocks right now, about 10 BPS, with room to push to Traxit 32, and a vision for Traxit Lite 100 BPS. And base layer throughput in the thousands of TPS, all thanks to parallel blocks. Payments that feel instant on layer one, no fiddly channel management. Plus security. Attackers have to outwork all honest blocks, not just a single chain. Add a monetary policy tuned for decentralized mining, no pre-mine, smooth emissions. And a stacked roadmap, Dagnite, ZK Bridge, Oracle Voting, all packaged as clean, hard fork upgrades. Okay, but you're teasing me. What's the actual timeline here? The doc lists 2025 to 2026 milestones, Dagnite Upgrade, ZK L1 L2 Bridge, and Oracle Voting. The theme's consistent. Keep L1 lightning fast for cash, scale features via L2, and protect decentralization along the way. So big picture, Bitcoin locked in the digital gold crown by prioritizing stability over speed. Caspa's flipping the script, showing proof of work can be fast, scalable, and actually usable for everyday payments, while making attacks harder and minor rewards smoother. And credit where it's due, Massive respect to Dr. Jonathan Sumpolinski and the entire research lineage behind GhostDAG and the BlockDAG model. Plus, a nod to the doc's authors and cited sources. This wasn't just marketing gloss. It's a well-reasoned, technical divergence with real-world impact. If there's one line to remember, it's this. Bitcoin is the vault. Caspa is the cash register. Open, fast, and trustless. Right on layer one. That's our show. I'm Alex. I'm Jamie. But hey, Alex, before we wrap, let me hit you with one. If money is the language of trust, why are we okay with a language that takes an hour to finish a sentence? Or in a world where proof is instant, why do we still wait for permission to believe it? If decentralization is about freedom, should speed be a luxury or a basic right? And when our kids look back, will they care more that their money was the first to prove scarcity or that it moved as fast as thought? If someone solves scaling proof of work, 
without breaking decentralization, is loyalty to the past still wisdom or just nostalgia? Big questions for next time. Catch you next time. And in the meantime, try paying for something in a system that doesn't make you wait. Casp is built so you won't have to.